In this video, what we're gonna do is go over a new texture website I found that has thousands of different fabric textures that we can use in our projects. I'll go through the website. I'll also show you how to set up these um, textures in a material in Redshift. So let's go ahead and get started. So the website that has all these free fabric textures is called Twinbrew. Um, now, they're also available on different platforms and it's a little bit of a mixed bag from what I've seen where if you go to say polygon.com, you can see that there are some of these fabrics here and perhaps they're new. Um, but if you were to go into them, notice that it requires um, you to buy them, whether it's their you know monthly thing or, or just a one-time deal. Uh, but if you go onto a website like Sketchfab, um, you know, we're looking at the twin brew section here um, and I'm logged into my account, free account. Uh, you can download some of these for free. Okay, you can just come down here, click download 3D model and there you go. Uh, now what you'll notice though, is that there aren't thousands here. So, you know, what you could do is go through the different websites, whether it's, you know, Polygon, Sketchfab, this is Zeal Project, which actually I never heard before, uh, but you can see once again, it's kind of, it's twin brew, you can come in here and, you know, this requires you to create an account, but you do get three uh, free daily credits. So that would make this free, which is great if that's the one you want. Um, but then it's kind of the same thing on, say architectures, where if you go to download this um, and you want say the high res version, though perhaps a small could work for your purposes, um, then you need to get their pro account. So if you want all of those textures for free, what you need to do is click on the browse 3D textures and that will take you um, to their texture section, right? Click on twin brew and then it will load their website and library. Now, full disclosure, this is not the easiest to use or most artist friendly website I've ever seen for um, finding and, and downloading 3D textures. And while they are free, there is a little bit of a catch when it comes to downloading them as we'll see. Uh, now, while I do mention there's thousands, right? Um, they, they say there's 13,500 and some. Um, I think there's really only a thousand and different patterns or designs, and then the rest are different colors. And, uh, you know, colors are something that are usually pretty easy for us to change and adjust in Redshift. I go over that a bit later. Um, but, you know, they have a lot of variation here. Now, you do have a couple different modes you can look at. So if I switch this to, say, detail, what's nice about this, you can see it close up, you know, on a couple different objects further away, whatever. Uh, you can also see if it will repeat. And so that can be very helpful. And I also think if you go a little bit further on, you can see it on different furniture, but also you can see an image of how large it actually is, right? So we can see it's seven, uh, roughly seven inches by seven inches or 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. That can help us when we get into Redshift or whatever 3D program you're using and um, you, know, you want to make it the correct scale. So I'll go back to gallery here. Uh, you also have different filters that you can use to help kind of trim this um, you know, amount of textures down. You know, also, you know, just point out that it does take a little while for it to kind of load in. Uh, so if you're just trying to kind of scroll through them all. And so I would recommend trying to use like a filter, whether it's a characteristics, like a specific type of cloth, if you um, know kind of what you're looking for there, or even something like, um, you know, choosing vinyl or imitation leather can really help trim it down. It will take a second, but it will also show you, um, you know, how many different designs uh, and colors that are still left here. Uh, another one um, that I thought was interesting was um, the design type. So if you know you're looking for a specific pattern, that can sometimes help narrow it down as well. Color, you know, perhaps you might find that helpful. Um, appearance, matte, shiny, that too can be be um, really nice. But what you can do is if you find one you like, click on it, and this is where you know things start to get a little bit um, unfortunate where if you're happy with this, look at all the images we just saw before, you click on download. Well, you have to fill out all this information after choosing the format. And I would definitely recommend going with um, PBR for Redshift, um, but there's a couple other options as well. Um, but yeah, you have to fill out all this information. And from what I've seen, it takes anywhere from like five minutes or so, maybe um, I had one time where it took 
a little bit closer to 10 minutes in order for them to send me the link to download it. Um, so that's kind of the only catch here is that you may have to wait a few minutes. I don't know if it has something to do with the amount of traffic they have or um, you know zipping up the, t the assets, but that's the only kind of um, catch there is um, if you wanna get all these textures for free. So with that, why don't we go ahead and jump into Cinema 4D and see how we can put it all together. I am just using a scene from the asset browser. Um, now, this scene was originally made for the standard uh, render, physical render, and so I stripped all those materials out and added a metal material for the um, kind of legs part, and we'll make a leather material here for the rest of this. Uh, and I did add a dome light and a disc just to kind of fill in some of the things um, we were losing. So what I can do here is actually take these textures, and it would help if I had, say, a node editor up, and we can drag them directly in here. So select them, drag them in there, and then if you get this warning, you can hit yes, close that, and let's go ahead and dock this. There we go, get rid of that guy, and man, a lot of just random things having to do here, move things around. So this is the roughness so that it can go there. This is metalness and we can just hook these up to where they go. Metalness to metalness, roughness to roughness. For our normal map, we do need a bump map node. I wish Redshift would change the name of this. I think normal maps are a little bit more standard now and more common than bump maps. So I suppose it does depend on where you're getting your textures from. And with that, we can start to get a sense of what this looks like. So still maybe a little bit of work um, to do here. First and foremost with our bump map node, we wanna switch this to tangent space normal. And that'll make a big difference here to the way everything looks. And from there, what I'm gonna do is take my texture and switch the color space to raw. It's a bit off screen, but it's about halfway down there in that file IO section. And that's gonna make this look a lot better, um, especially on the, the shader ball here if you, you want to trust that. Now we still have some issues on um, our object itself and that's where the size of this pattern really comes into handy. Now if this was set to say cubic, what we could do is then maybe come in here to our coordinates and work with those to make it the size we saw um, on uh, the website there, that seven inches, 20 centimeters, I think it was. As this is a UVW mapped object, it's really just up to, to meet a kind to, kind of eyeball it, okay? So obviously this pattern is way too big and we can even kind of zoom in and see that. So what we could do is, you know, maybe refer back to the website here and just kind of see what the pattern looks like on something close up, something like this, where you can just maybe barely see it. Um, I suspect these are 3D renders, so, um, you know, that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, I feel like I've seen that couch before, probably even used that couch in a 3D render. Um, so yeah, it definitely needs to be much smaller. We could try maybe something like 10 and 10 and see if that looks any better once Redshift decides to update and help us out. And yeah, I think that's pretty close. It probably should be just a little bit smaller. So maybe we do something like 13 all right, but once again, you know, I'm just kind of eyeballing this, though if I was using projection mapping, I could probably get a little bit more specific in that. And back in our camera view, this looks pretty good. Now, I did mention previously that, you know, if I wanted to uh, adjust the color or I wouldn't be too picky about the color because it'd be easy to adjust. And so that's where I like the color correct. Um, if I can find it, node, there we go, drop it right on there. And you can then just sh shift the hue here to whatever um, you want. And while this can be a bit tricky to dial in the color exactly the way you want, you can certainly do it in compositing. Um, and of course you had those plenty of color options um, on the, the website. So uh, definitely wanted to make a quick video about that. And so, 
that will do it for this one. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you go ahead and like it and subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate that as well. And until next time, take care.